Welcome back. And again, if this is your first time, then we are currently reviewing Unit 7 of 19 for the Florida Real Estate Licensing Exam. All right, Unit 7. Let's review a very important subject. Okay, very important subject. Federal and state laws pertaining to real estate. This review highlights the laws deemed most important for real estate professionals and anyone dealing in real estate transactions. First, we will review the Civil Rights Act of 1866, 1964, and 1968. Okay, 1866, 1964, and 1968. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibits racial discrimination in all real estate transactions, sale or rental without exception. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was landmark legislation that ended racial segregation in schools, workplaces, and in public accommodations. Title II of the 1964 Civil Rights Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, and national origin in places of public accommodations engaged in interstate commerce, including hotels and motels, restaurants, gas stations, and places of entertainment, okay, cross state lines. Title III prohibits state and municipal governments from denying access to public facilities on the grounds of race, color, religion, or national origin. The Fair Housing Act is in, contained in Title B of the Civil Rights Act of 1968. I'll repeat. The Fair Housing Act is contained in Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, 54 years ago. The act prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, and national origin when selling or leasing residential property. The law covers residential dwellings and apartments as well as vacant land acquired to construct residential dwellings. In 1988, 1988, Congress passed the Fair Housing Amendment Act that expanded the civil rights protections to families and children younger than 18 and pregnant women. We're now a protected class. The act refers to the protected class as familial status. The second protected class included in the 1908 amendment was handicapped status. Handicapped status includes individuals with mental or physical impairments that limit major life activities. The 1988, 1988, that's not that long ago, amendments also created the Equal Housing Opportunity Poster, okay? This poster must be displayed in real estate offices and any other businesses involved in the housing industry, all housing industries. No protection is given under the Fair Housing Act to individuals on age, occupation, marital status, or sexual orientation. Prohibited activities include 
channeling a protected class home of home seekers to or away from certain areas, also known as steering. Think of it as a steering wheel, all right? Using the entry or the rumor of an entry of a protected class into a neighborhood to persuade owners to sell, known as block busting. All right, Ooh, who's moving in? You better sell. Or, very important, denying loans or insurance coverage for homes in certain neighborhoods known as redlining. We've heard of this a lot recently. Coding different terms or conditions for buying, renting is also prohibited. That is, as is advertising that a housing is available only to certain classes of people. The Americans with Disability Act, the ADA, requires that places of public accommodations and commercial facilities are accessible for persons with disabilities. This includes real estate offices. Okay? The Interstate Land Sales Full Disclosure Act is intended to prevent fraudulent marketing schemes when land is sold without being seen by purchasers. Developers must register subdivisions of a hundred or more lots with Consumer Financial Protection Bureau before they can offer unimproved lots in interstate commerce across state lines. Developers of 25 or more lots must provide buyers with a property report prior to signing a sale contract. The Florida Residential and Landlord Tenant Act requires landlords to maintain security deposits and advanced rent in one of three ways. They can deposit it in a separate non-interest bearing account. Two, they can deposit in a separate interest bearing account and pay the tenants either 5% of the interest or 70% of the annualized average, average interest payable on the account, or three, post a surety bond, or the lesser of the amount of the funds, or 50,000 and pay the tenant 5% of the interest. Keep in mind that if a real estate broker holds the funds on behalf of the landlord, the broker must abide by the real estate license law concerning escrow funds. All right. Now we will review some important time periods regarding tenant deposits. Okay, time periods regarding tenant deposits. Landlords of five or more units must notify the tenant within 30 days in writing which method is used to hold the tenant's deposit. At the end of the rental agreement, a landlord does not intend to make a claim of the security deposit, has 15 days to return the security deposit. So your landlord wants to keep your deposit. Hmm. A landlord who is um, making a claim on the deposit has 30 days to notify the tenant of the claim. After receiving with the notification a landlord's claim on the security deposit, the tenant has 15 days to object in writing to the claim. Knowledge is power. Stay informed, especially on federal and state laws pertaining to real estate if you're planning on getting a real estate license, especially here in Florida. Stay informed. 
Thank you for watching. That'll do it for this unit. Next one will be out soon, so please subscribe and share. And again, your kind comments are appreciated. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.